Hi everyone and welcome to my kitchen. Today we are making birria quesa tacos, which is a Mexican recipe that's become an internet sensation and that's because it is simply amazing. And today we're gonna be making it on an instant pot, which takes way less time and I'm happy to share the excitement. To make the first part of the recipe, which is the birria, of course, we need dried peppers, starting with eight guajillos, two ancho chilies, and four puyas. All I did was cut them open, remove the stem, seeds, and veins. Now set them aside. Roughly dice half of a medium white onion. I love that this recipe is so good and it has very minimal prep. Continue with half a pound of tomatoes, and these can be Roma tomatoes. I'm using vine rye. I'm just going to remove that core area and do the same thing that you did with the onion. Transfer them onto a dish and also prep five garlic cloves. All you wanna do is remove that peel. Let's head to the stove, come on. Place a comal over medium to medium low heat and once nice and hot, start toasting those peppers. Make sure to turn them continuously because ultimately the goal here is to prevent them from burning by getting that nice and deep smoky flavor enhanced. You're gonna know these are ready when you can start to smell those aromas and also they're gonna feel hot to the touch. Boy, do I love that smell. Let's finish up the rest. Let's rinse and drain them. Cover them completely with hot boiling water and leave them in there until they are fully hydrated and soft. For this next step, we need half a teaspoon of whole cumin, one teaspoon of whole allspice, half a cinnamon stick, and four cloves. Place a large pan over medium heat. Once nice and hot, toast that cumin. The cumin is actually very small and kind of thin, so I'd rather toast it separately so we can get it on point. Remove from the heat as soon as they release their fragrance and are slightly darker in color. Now toast the allspice, cinnamon stick, and cloves. I love the fragrance released because it's an indication of the evolution of flavors. Plus, it lets you know when they're ready. Lower the heat to medium low and add a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. Once nice and hot, add those onions and the garlic. Saute them until the onions begin to soften, then add the tomatoes. And continue to cook until the tomatoes are completely soft. This looks great. Turn off the heat and transfer it onto a blender. Make sure to get all of that goodness in there. Also add in all of the toasted spices. Measure out two cups of that chili soaking liquid and pour it in. Also all of the hydrated chilies. Finally, two teaspoons of dry Mexican oregano and two tablespoons of white distilled vinegar. Cover and blend until completely smooth. If you need to, you can always strain it and set it aside until we need it. Let's talk about the meat. So we have two pounds of chuck short ribs and also three pounds of beef cheeks. Now, if you can't find beef cheeks, you can stick with short ribs, you'll be fine. Generously season the meat with salt, and this is about one tablespoon of kosher salt. Let's flip them so we can season the other side. Now do some freshly ground black pepper. Next, set your Instant Pot on high saute mode. I'll set it to 25 minutes. We can add more time if needed. Now press start. When done preheating, pour in a couple of tablespoons of olive oil and brown each side of the meat. Remember that browning the meat does make a difference because it enhances the flavor. When ready, transfer it into a dish and continue with the rest. Now place all of the browned pieces back into the Instant Pot. Pour in six cups of water and the blended chili sauce. Pour one more cup of water into the blender and swirl so we can get the last bit of sauce and into the pot it goes. Finally, add three mint or yerbabuena sprigs, three bay leaves, and one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. Press cancel, cover, secure the lid and cook on high pressure for 40 minutes with a 10 minute natural release. 
While that's happening, let's take advantage of time and shred Oaxaca cheese. The amount you'll need depends on, do you like to be generous or not? I purchased two 12 ounce balls of cheese. If you cannot find Oaxaca cheese, feel free to use mozzarella. After the natural pressure release is done, quick release the remaining pressure. When you open the pot, the consomme should be a beautiful red color and the meat fall off the bone tender. Press cancel and remove the meat from the consomme. Discard any bones which should be loose by now, if not, at the verge of falling off the meat. Strain the consomme into another pot. You may need a spoon to stir it, allowing it to pass through the strainer. Remove the thick paste of ingredients and continue straining. As you may have noticed by now, there's a film of fat that was rendered throughout the cooking process. Spoon it out and reserve it because this flavored fat is going to season our tacos. Then just leave the pot on low heat to keep the consomme warm until we are ready to serve. As for the meat, using a knife cut into small pieces or shred it because look at that. That's exactly what you want. You want your meat to be super tender. So just cut it into small pieces. Transfer the meat back into the deep dish and add more of that consomme to keep it nice and moist, about one cup. We are almost there. Place a comal or a pan over medium heat. You can spread the oil or simply dip that corn tortilla into that flavored fat. I'd say don't add too much. It's gonna spread once you add it into the comal. When the tortilla feels pliable, Carefully flip it. Add the mozzarella cheese. If you need to, lower that heat so that tortilla doesn't burn and that cheese has enough time to melt. Add the birria. Close it and look at that. Once that underside it looks nice, golden brown and crispy, flip it so the other side does the same. While that's happening, we can fit another tortilla. Birria is traditionally made from goat, but beef can also be used. This meat stew truly represents the flavors of Mexico, so profound, rich, and colorful. These tacos are perfect for any occasion. We personally like to make them whenever our family comes together. There's nothing better than having a great time with amazing food. When all the quesa tacos are golden brown, crispy, and the cheese has fully melted, Plate them up, sprinkle some chopped onion, cilantro, and a good salsa. I'll leave you the link to this avocado salsa in the description area. Also serve the consomme on a bowl, add chopped cilantro and onion as well, a squeeze of lime juice, and stir everything to combine. Enjoy as a side to your tacos, or even better, dip your taco in the consomme. All right, if you're wondering why I have a plate over here, that's because you can make these with almond flour tortillas. You know that has to be an option for me because I am a type one diabetic. And of course, I might be able to get a corn tortilla later on. But for now, let's do this. I, I wanna dunk my taco into the consomme. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> this is. Mm. 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 It's gonna be messy, but mm, memorable. So good. This is so good. Oh, man. Mmm. Mm. And the avocado salsa pairs perfectly. So you may be wondering, what are these guys gonna make with all of that birria? Well, we like to freeze it because if we have that craving for this recipe, we can just defrost it and make it again. Plus, it's a sin to not have this birria. Mmm. Guys, you have to try this at home. Come back and let me know how it went down in the comments area. Don't forget to follow me on all of my social media platforms. And remember that this recipe is going to be on my website, villacocina.com, available for you to print out convenience at your fingertips. All right, until the next one. Happy, happy birria day. <laughs> Bye.